Hi, welcome to the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance presentation of high wind examples at 170 miles an hour using the new rules of ASCE 7-16 and the sixth edition of the Florida High Wind Installation Manual. I'm Paul Lexak, technical trainer, Boral Roofing, and I will go through six examples of fastening requirements uh, for this wind zone. The Florida 170 mile per hour wind zone for ASCE 716 is found on a map in the FRSA TRI 6th edition on page 32. It includes St. Lucie, Martin, Palm Beach, Monroe, Collier, Lee, and Charlotte counties. It also includes Miami-Dade and Broward, but those two counties use the NOA and the RASs. The big difference between the old manual and the new 6th edition FRSA TRI High Wind Manual is different types of roofs or roof style. The old manual had one style roof. The new manual separates the tables into hip roofs and gable roofs. Also, Another difference with the ASCE 7-16 are the individual roof zones located on a hip and gable roof. In ASCE 7-10, there were three zones for all roofs. In the ASCE 7-16, the new sixth edition of the manual, there are six different zones for gable roofs and four different zones for hip roofs. Let's look at the roof zones for ASCE 7-16. In figure one, hip roof, you'll see four different zones. Zone one, zone two E, zone two R, and zone three. In figure two, gable roofs, you'll see six distinct zones. In the manual, they have divided these zones into either a low pressure zone or a high pressure zone. In a hip roof, figure one, the low pressure zones are everything on that roof other than zone three. The high pressure zone is zone three, just the corners. On a gable roof, the high pressure zones are 3E and 3R, and the low pressure zones are 1, 2E, 2R, and 2N. When looking at the whole roof and the roof zones, there's two options. The first option is the single fastening method, which is you use one fastening method for the entire roof that meets or exceeds both the high and low pressure zones. The other method is the two fastening method, where you use one method of fastening for the high pressure zones while using another method of fastening for the low pressure zones. To do this, you need to calculate the size of the high pressure zone, which is the in the formula for A. Uh, that is covered in another class, but it has to be calculated for you to use the two fastening method. Using the Florida 6th edition high wind manual, let's look at some tables and how they're going to be used to configure our six examples in this wind zone. Table three, mechanical fastening methods, is found on page 31 of the sixth edition. It lists the various attachment uh, methods and also the mechanical fastening resistant values in foot pounds over plywood for the low, medium, and high profile tile. It's actually the aerodynamic uplift moments recorded in testing, and you'll need these values to meet or exceed your design uplift moments which are found on other tables. Before proceeding, I'd like to spend a minute on foam attachment methods. The foam attachment methods may be an alternative to mechanical fastening. These listings are not in the FRSA TRI 6th edition, but rather in the foam manufacturer's product approval. 
you'll have to look at their patty sizes, their placement, and their uplift resistance and compare those to your design pressures using that full manufacturer's product approval. There are now six wind uplift tables, three for hip roofs, three for gable roofs. The hip roofs and the gable roofs are broken down by exposure. So exposure B, hip roof, is in table 2HB. Exposure B, gable roof, is in table 2GB. Likewise, in exposure C, in a hip roof, you have two, table 2HC. In gable roof, you have two table 2GC. And it follows in exposure D, table 2HD and table 2GD. Let's look at the components to determine our fastening. Is it a hip roof, a gable roof, or a combination of hip and gables? What exposure are you in, B, C, or D? Exposure definitions can be found on page 50 of the FRSA TRI guide. What's your roof pitch? There are now three distinctive roof pitch groups. We'll go over those in another slide. What wind speed are you in? Always check with your local building department to ensure that your wind speed is their wind speed. What are your low pressure zones and what are your high pressure zones? What's your mean roof height? Anywhere from zero to 15 feet up to and including 60 foot. Above 60 foot, you'll have to do some engineering. What's your tile profile? Are you a flat tile? Low, uh, low profile, a medium profile, or a high profile. What is your manufacturer's tile ratio? That's based on the size of the tile. And lastly, how are you going to fasten it? Nails, screws, or are you going to use foam? Here are what the table twos look like. Here's two examples. On page 26, you'll find table 2HC which is for roofs that are hip roofs in exposure C. Table 2 GC is the gable roofs in exposure C. We will now look at six examples at 170 miles per hour. For our examples, we'll make sure they're all exposure C, and we're going to use the same tile ratio, which is a high ratio of 1.10. We're going to do three hip roofs at the three different slopes on the tables, and those are less than 4.5 and 12, 4.5 and 12 to less than 612, and then 612 to 1212. And we'll also do the same slopes for the three gable roofs we're looking at. There are three steps to determine fastening. Step one is to find your uplift moment table. And you'll need to know if it's a hip or gable roof and you'll also need the exposure B, C, or D. Second step is to find the design uplift moment both for the low pressure zone and the high pressure zone. For that, you'll need wind speed, slope, mean roof height, and a new thing called tile ratio, which is an adjustment to the table to the actual dimensions of the tile you are using on your specific project. In essence, it's a correct correction factor. Step three is find your fastening in table three. You'll need to find a resistance greater than or equal to the design uplift moment you found in step two. Example one, 170 mile per hour, hip roof, exposure C, at less than 4.5 12 slope, 30 foot mean roof height, we'll look at all three profiles in a tile ratio of 1.10. Step one, find your table. In this case, we're using table 2HC. The HC stands for a hip roof in exposure C. We can find these on page 26 of the manual. So for example one, we'll go to step two, find our uplift moment part one. 
170 miles an hour, hip roof exposure C. We're using table 28C. We start with our roof slope of less than 4.5 on 12. We go to the mean roof height of 30 foot at 170 miles per hour, and we come up with an uplift moment of 37.5. Now that we found our uplift moment of 37.5 in step two, part one, we look at step two, part two, and factor in the tile ratio. We take the 37.5, take a tile ratio of 1.10, which is a very large tile, and we get an updated uplift moment of 41.3. Step three is find our fastening. We take our uplift moment of 41.3, go to table three, and find out at 170 miles an hour, those mechanically fastening methods can be used to meet the identical LPZ and HPZ uplift moments of 41.3. Example two, we changed our roof slope to four and a half on 12 to less than 612. We go to table 28C and get our required aerodynamic uplift moment. We factor in the tile ratio and then go to table three and find out that those fastening methods can be used on a hip roof at 170 mile an hour exposure C, four and a half on 12 to less than 612 slope, 30 foot mean roof height. In example three, we'll look at a steep roof, 612 to 1212, but let's just look at a mean roof height of 15 foot and flat tiles only. We go to our table 28C, we get our uplift moments. You'll see now that the LPZ and the HPZ are different. We'll factor in our tile ratio. And then let's look at the LPZ first, all right? On table three, flat tile, those are your mechanically faceted method options. When you go to the HPZ, you'll find out you're limited to just one faceting method, two screws on a low profile tile at 170 miles an hour in the HPZs. All right, for example four, we'll switch to a gable roof. We'll go down to a less than four and a half on 12 slope, keep the mean roof height at 30 foot. We have to go to a new table, table two GC. GC stands for gable exposure C. We get our uplift moments from the table and then factor in the tile ratio. We then go look at the LPZ and we find out on table three, for a low profile tile or flat tile, that's your only mechanically fastening method. For medium profile, that's your fastening method. And for high profile, that's your fastening method. When you go look at the HPZ, you'll find out that only the medium profile has a mechanically fastening option. The other profiles, the low and the high, plus battens, will have to be used, uh, will have to use foam for the high pressure zones. For example, five at 170 miles an hour, we'll go to a four and a half on 12 to less than 612 slope. We'll look at table two GC and get our LPZ and our HPZ uplift moments. We'll factor in the tile ratio. We'll look at the LPZ first, go to table three and find that those faceting methods can be used in this scenario. If we go to the HPZ, we'll find out, again, only medium profile can be mechanically attached. The low and high profiles in the HPZs will, will have to use foam to be attached. In example six, we'll look at a steep roof, gable roof, 612 to 1212. We go to table 2GC and get our uplift moments for both the LPZ and the HPZ. We'll factor in the tile ratio, and then let's look at the LPZ. We'll find out on table three that those methods can be used to mechanically fasten tile in the LPZ. We'll look at the HPZ and we'll find out that these mechanical methods can be used in the HPZ. And 
Thank you. For more information, go to www.tileroofing.org.